Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a $200 laptop that I recently picked up from Walmart. These were released by Asus a couple weeks ago and I've kind of had my eye on them. They do make a couple different models. They have an 11.6 inch model and this one here which is a 15.6 inch. If you try to search up the 11.6 inch, you're going to find it for the same exact price. Now I'm definitely not expecting this to be a high-end gaming laptop given that we only paid around $200 for this unit, but I kind of wanted to see how it did perform. I mean, there are a lot of people out there that don't need a lot of power with their laptops, and I really just wanted to see if it would be worth picking something like this up for web browsing, video playback, emulation, and maybe even some light gaming. We'll get into all that in just a second, but I want to give you a closer look at this thing because on first glance, it actually doesn't look like a bad deal. I mean, it's all plastic material, but we do have a bigger keyboard, a nice trackpad, and by the way, the keyboard does have a dedicated number pad and it's backlit. It's a single color LED, but it does have adjustable brightness, and when it comes to the screen, it's actually a 1080p 15.6 inch IPS. It's definitely not a super high quality panel, but uh, for the price of this laptop, I think getting a 1080p IPS is still pretty good. When it comes to the I.O., over here on the left hand side, we have our power in. And by the way, this does come with a 35 watt wall charger, full size HDMI, USB 3.0, USB type C 3.2 Gen 1. No display out, unfortunately, but it will do a little bit of quick charging here and there. Moving over to the right hand side, we have another USB 3.0 port and a micro SD card reader. Before we check out the main specs, I did want to pull the bottom off of this thing and just check out the upgradability. And with this here, there's not much we can do because the RAM is soldered to the board. There is a free M.2 slot, so we can add a little bit of extra storage. If you needed to upgrade that Wi-Fi slash Bluetooth module, you could also do that. But that's about the extent of upgrading this laptop here. So what are we really getting here for $200? When it comes to the CPU, we have that Intel Celeron N4020. This is a dual core CPU up to 2.7 gigahertz. Built-in Intel UHD 600 graphics, 4GB of LPDDR4 RAM running at 2400MHz and this is soldered to the board, non-user upgradable, 128GB of eMMC storage, but like we saw we can add an extra M.2 drive, a 15.6 inch 1080p display, and the manufacturer claims up to 8 hours of battery life and you know I can actually really see that with this low-end Intel Celeron chip. And when it comes to the operating system, out of the box, this is running Windows 10 in S mode, but you can easily go over to the Microsoft Store and upgrade to Windows 10 Home for free, and that's what I've done with this unit. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and plug this into my game capture so we can get a better look at everything. We'll test out a little bit of web browsing, some video playback, we'll do some gaming and emulation. And by the end of this video, we'll decide if it's worth $200 or not. Alright, so here we are. I did upgrade to Windows 10 Home from Windows S. You can do it totally free from the Microsoft Store. As you can see, we have that Intel Celeron N4020, and this is going to be the main limiting factor on this laptop. Uh, RAM is only at 4 gigs. It's not great for Windows, but we only have two cores here with a maximum boost up to 2.7. RAM is running at 2400 megahertz, and it's stating that it's running in single channel. And we have those built-in UHD 600 graphics. So when a lot of people pick up a cheap laptop like this, one of the main things you're going to be doing on it is web browsing, maybe a little bit of document editing. Uh, let's check out some web browsing here with the Edge browser. We'll head over to the ASUS website. And I am connected to my 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi network in the house. So yeah, not too bad here. Let's go to their laptops. What do we got here for home? Standard. So yeah, it's uh, kind of populating everything way quicker than I thought it would, given that we have that dual-core Intel chip. I mean, web browsing on this shouldn't be too much of an issue. I've tested out a few of these lower-end Intel chips, and it's never really given me any trouble, especially with the Edge browser, but I've also tested with Chrome. Now, I want to check out a little bit of video playback from YouTube. I'm not expecting 4K video playback, but since this does have a 1080p screen built in, we should be able to do 1080p... So we're at 1080, stats for nerds. Ooh, and we had 31 drop frames there to start with, 36. Let me try one thing here. Uh, I'm gonna make sure that we're gonna buffer in all the way before we start the play. See if that happens again. Give it a second to buffer. And yeah, got a couple drop frames. Not too bad though. 
And uh, just seeing what it's dropping at 1080p, I'm sure it's going to drop even more at 4K. But if you didn't have stats for nerds on screen, you really wouldn't notice this. I mean, that's 19 drop frames out of 1600. Not too shabby. Let's just test it real quick. We'll go up to 4K. And I'm sure this is going to be pretty bad performance, but we're here and let's go. Oh, wow. Yeah, our viewpoint is only 1080, but we are streaming this video at 4K 60. And stats for nerds did freeze up for a second, but... That's actually really surprising. Not too bad at all for 4K streaming. I did install Steam and I installed some older games. I mean, I really kind of got an idea of how this thing is going to perform. It's definitely not going to run Cyberpunk 2077. It's probably not even going to run Rocket League. So I did install some older games. But uh, one of the main things a lot of people would be running on something like this, given that it's a cheaper laptop you could pick up for the kids, is Minecraft. And I think that's the first one I want to test out here. I do have it downloaded. Let's see here. Let me go ahead and get everything ready here and we'll see how it performs. FPS is up in the top left hand corner and we are running at 60, but I did have to drop some of these settings down. Instead of running at about 18 chunks, we're set to 12. Still, it's a very enjoyable experience. Minecraft can be played on something like this. And going into it, I had a good feeling that we'd see good performance. Microsoft has done a pretty decent job of optimizing this game for these low-end Celeron chips. Next up, we have Half-Life 2, 720p with a low-medium mix. I probably could have just turned this all the way down to low and then up this to around 900p, but we're sitting at 720. And by the end of this run, I had an average of 71 FPS. But you will see some dips, like that right there, jumping into the water. Went below 60. But when it comes down to it, Half-Life 2 can basically be played on anything nowadays. Next up, we have one of my favorite games, the original Skyrim. I was really hoping that we could get 30 FPS out of this. We're at 720p, low settings, and I got an average of 27. Left 4 Dead 2 did a little better than Skyrim, but we're still not at 60. 720p, low settings, we got an average of 41 FPS. So when it comes to PC gaming, as you saw, it's not a great laptop for that, and going into it, I didn't expect it to be. Older titles like Simpsons Hit and Run should run at full speed, but uh, what about emulation? First up, we have some Dreamcast using the ReDream emulator. 1280 by 960 Crazy Taxi 2 running at 60. I had a great feeling that Dreamcast would perform well on this chip, and as you can see, it's running it at full speed, even with a little bit of an upscale. Moving over to PSP using the standalone version of PPSSPP. 2x resolution, Vulcan backend, we have Monster Hunter, and it's running at 30. That's what it natively ran at on the original PSP console, and we're getting decent performance. It's really not that bad. But this isn't the hardest game to run for PSP. Let's go ahead and check one of those out. Chains of Olympus, Vulcan back in. Unfortunately, I did have to drop this down to 1x resolution. I was hoping I could get two out of it. I also tested OpenGL and DirectX 11, but with this game here, Vulcan seemed to perform the best, and unfortunately, we just got to keep it at that native res. But I mean, it is doing it at 1x, and to tell you the truth, this should handle a lot of these PSP games at full speed. And the final thing I wanted to test here for emulation was GameCube, using the Dolphin emulator, DirectX 11 back in, Soul Calibur 2, it's an easier one to run, but we are at full speed. This is actually performing really, really well. Now this doesn't mean that it's going to run all of these GameCube and Wii games at full speed, because there are games that are a lot harder to emulate than this one here. 
Like Auto Modalista, this is one of my go-to tests and it's trying its hardest here. I also tried the Vulcan back in, OpenGL, DX9, DX11 seemed to perform the best, but uh, we can't quite hit 60 constantly with this game here. So in the end, should you pick up a laptop like this? Well, I mean, it really depends on your budget and what you plan to do with it. If you're just looking to surf the web, maybe do a little bit of Netflix or YouTube video playback, then something like this would work out. And given the price is at around $200, it's really not a bad deal if you know exactly what you're getting into. I mean, you got to go into one of these laptops knowing you're buying a cheaper laptop, a low-end laptop. The price really reflects it. Going in, trying to buy a $200 laptop to run Cyberpunk 2077 isn't going to work out. But if you need a Windows machine for surfing the web, video playback from your favorite apps like YouTube and Netflix, some document editing, email checking, and some light emulation, then a laptop like this might be sufficient for your needs. You just got to go into this knowing that it's a lower end laptop. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. I really appreciate you watching. If you want to learn more about this laptop, I will leave a few links in the description. If you want to see anything else running on this, or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, Thanks for watching.